two weeks ago, Rich Hickey announced a major new library for Clojure, called Clojure Spec. A lot of people are excited about Spec, and rightfully so. Let's see what Spec can do for you. I'll just start with an empty project and project.clj file. Clojure Spec will be bundled with the upcoming 1.9 release of Clojure. We can already try it out today by using the alpha version. Require spec in your namespace and get a REPL going. So far, so good. In this age of the Internet of Things, we will be building a robot chef that can cook delicious meals straight from the cloud. At the heart of our system is an innocuous looking function, cook. We pass our robot chef a recipe consisting of ingredients and steps. Here's an example. This looks simple enough. It's a nice and clean interface, something even a stay-at-home dad can manage. Still, as we're building this, a nagging feeling of unease creeps up on us. What if you pass the chef an invalid recipe? Will it politely mention that something is amiss, or will it start hurling eggs at the cloud-connected fridge? Clearly, we need a way to validate recipes, so they can't make it into our system and wreak havoc. This is where Closure Spec comes in. The asValid function takes two arguments. The first argument is the spec. Here we pass it the simplest kind of spec, a function which returns true or false, also known as a predicate function. The second argument is the value we want to validate. Valid will also return true or false, so if we wrap that in a cert, our function will fail early when given invalid input, which is exactly what we want. Besides valid, spec also provides a function named conform. If the value is valid, then conform simply returns it, although perhaps in a slightly different form. If the value is invalid, then the special symbol closure spec slash invalid is returned. Don't worry too much about conform just yet, we'll get back to it later. Our recipe validation doesn't amount to much yet. Let's improve it a bit. Predicate specs are only the beginning, the smallest building blocks. Closure spec provides a whole bunch of functions and macros to create more complicated specs. Recipes have to be maps, with keywords for keys and vectors for values. We can express this with a map of spec. This still allows all kinds of gibberish to be passed in, but at least it's already stopping some nonsense from coming through. Clojure maintains a global registry of specs, so you can refer to them simply by name. This name has to be a namespace qualified keyword. There's a good chance we'll have to validate recipes in other places as well. So let's register our budding spec with s slash def. The steps of a recipe have to be a vector of strings. That's also easy to spec with call off. This says that steps is a collection of strings, more specifically a vector. Now we can add an extra assertion to check the recipe's steps. Using call off works for our steps, because all steps are of the same type. But the ingredients list doesn't form a homogeneous collection. We will need a more powerful tool to validate it. Ingredients form a sequence of triplets, an amount, which is a number, a unit of measurement, expressed as a keyword, and the name of the ingredient, which will be a string. In computer science, there's a good generic mechanism to validate and match sequences, known as regular expressions. Regexes are most commonly used to match sequences of characters, or strings, but spec allows you to write regexes for arbitrary sequences of values. That's pretty cool, right? Let's dive into that a little more. Closure spec provides five operators for constructing regular expressions over sequences. There's the asterisk, the plus sign, and the question mark, and these three are known as quantifiers. These also exist in regular regular expressions for strings, and they have the exact same function. The asterisk matches zero or more items, the plus sign matches one or more items, and the question mark matches at most one item. So in this case, any number of keywords in a sequence will match, including none at all. But if there's something else in there, it won't be valid. 
plus is almost identical, except that now the empty vector is no longer valid. You need at least one item to be present. The cat operator, short for concatenate, lets you say first this, then that, then something else. It lets you combine any number of predicates and specs in a specific order. Here we're matching any sequence of two elements consisting of a number followed by a keyword. We have to name these parts that we're matching. Here I'm just calling them num and key. Now that we've made it this far, let's have another look at conform. Remember that it either returns a conformed value or the symbol closure.spec slash invalid. For most specs we've seen so far, the conformed output will be equal to the input. But cat is different. Instead of conforming to the input sequence, it conforms to a result map built up using the keys we specified. Now we should be able to understand the spec for ingredients. A single ingredient consists of a quantity, a unit, and a name. The ingredient list is a succession of any number of ingredients. Now by using conform, not only do we know if the ingredient list is valid, but we get it back in a format that's much more suitable for further processing. There's one more regex operator we haven't covered yet, which is alt. It's the equivalent of the vertical bar, or pipe character, in normal regular expressions for strings. It lets you express a choice. Just as with cat, we need to pick names for the possible alternatives. But again, this comes in handy when using conform. In this case, the conformed value isn't a map, but it's a vector, containing the key and the matched value. This style of tagging values is known as variants, and there was a whole talk about it at ClojureConch two years back. I'll add a link to it to the show notes, as it's quite interesting. One thing to watch out for is that when you combine and nest any of these regex operators, they will still just match a single sequence. So even though in this example we're nesting the plus operator inside cat, it won't match nested vectors in the input. This distinction doesn't come up when using regular expressions over strings, because you can't have a string inside a string, the way that you can have a vector inside a vector. A string is always a flat sequence of characters. To match a nested collection inside a regex spec, you have two options. You can use a non-regex spec that describes the nested collection. In this example, the inner vectors are each validated with call off, and we use cat to say that the one with numbers come first, followed by the one with keywords. If both the outer collection and any nested collections are validated with regex specs, then you need some way to specify where the nesting starts. You can do this by wrapping a regex spec in a call to s spec. This way the matching will start anew on the current item, being the nested collection. Back to our recipes. We have specs set up for ingredients and steps. Now we can tie them together to validate recipes in a single step. And thanks to the power of conform, we can process the result much more easily. The only missing ingredient, if you will, is the s keys function. Before we used map off to validate recipes, but map off doesn't tell you anything about what values can be used for specific keys. Keys works like this. We pass it keyword arguments, a list of keys which is required to be present, and a list of optional keys. We're making steps optional, and if you omit them then the RoboChef will simply mix all the ingredients together. These lists of required and optional keys again use namespace qualified keywords. They serve a double purpose. Spec will look for these keywords as keys in the map, but it will also look for a registered spec with the same name to validate the corresponding value. Now we can validate our recipe in a single step again. If user passes in an invalid recipe though, then the bland assertion error they're getting isn't very helpful. The nice thing is, that we can ask spec to explain itself. The explain function will generate an error message and print it to standard out. If you want to get the message as a string, you can use explain-str, whereas with explain-data, 
you get a data structure containing the same information. These error messages are a bit hard to read. I really hope they get better before the final release, but at least all the information is there, so you should be able to figure things out. And now we can use this to throw a more descriptive exception. I hope with this episode I managed to give you a taste of Clojure spec. There's a lot more to talk about, more ways to create specs, custom conformers, instrumenting functions and macros, and doing generative testing. If you want more comprehensive coverage, I suspect you start with the official guide on Clojure.org. There have also been a number of good blog posts on the subject already. I'll leave a couple of links in the show notes. As always, if you have any feedback, please send it to Arna at lambdaisland.com. That's it for now. See you next time.